Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're talking about a big one. My most anticipated 4K set of the year, The Godfather 4K Trilogy. So let's talk. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. The man who doesn't spend time with his family can never be a real man. So I don't think it's any secret that most people's favorite movies or favorite movie trilogies of all time is the Godfather trilogy. It's also one of the most critically acclaimed franchises ever. The Godfather 1 and 2 usually show up on best movies ever made list from AFI or Sight and Sound. It always shows up. Francis Ford Coppola made two masterpieces in, in uh, The Godfather 1 and 2 and then he made The Godfather 3. But we're here to talk about all three of them, a trilogy, and this new 4K set that Paramount has just released. And I gotta be honest, just going right out of the gate, I was not disappointed. I held this in such high hopes, and in, I, 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 I don't know why, but I was anticipating just amazement. Like, I, I didn't want to be let down. Uh, Paramount, you know, they. this is the godfather we're talking about here. There's a reason why this is on a pedestal. And the 4Ks should be held to that same exact standard that the movies themselves have been held to. There's a reason why, because you know what? We're going to talk about the films and we're going to talk about the 4Ks. The reason why The Godfather 3 gets dragged through the mud so much is not because it's a bad movie, it's just because it's not The Godfather 1 and 2. And the 4Ks, I'm holding to that same exact standard that I held for those movies, because The Godfather 1 and 2 are some of the greatest movies ever made, obviously, Bar none. So in 1972, at the, at the 1972 Academy Awards, The Godfather took home Best Picture and Marlon Brando won Best Actor, but Al Pacino did not win Best Actor, not for this and not for The Godfather 2. He actually didn't get a Best Actor win until A Scent of a Woman in, I believe, 1990 or 1991. I've drawn a blank on that. But either way, he, he didn't get it for these movies, even though these are probably his best movies or, you know, heat for me personally. But he didn't win it for this, but The Godfather, when it came out, was a movie that was expected not to do well. They had a lot of studio interference from Paramount. They didn't want to, like, make this movie. They didn't like the budget that Francis Ford Coppola was coming back with. They didn't like how long it was taking. They didn't like the first cut of the movie. And before you know it, movie magic happens. It's released. It is the biggest blockbuster of the year. Yes, biggest blockbuster of the year. Before blockbusters, though, but... It was still the number one movie, it took the world by storm, and it is a classic. It is very well acted, The Godfather. You get Al Pacino in probably his most famous movie, and I love The Godfather. It is, out of the three, The Godfather is my favorite, favorite movie. It is always good to see James Caan, because he doesn't, he's not in the second one until the end, and seeing John Cazale, and Talia Stryer, and everybody in this movie, Robert Duvall with hair. It's just awesome to see everybody pop up in The Godfather. It's such a well-made movie. The 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 way it's structured with the, you know, if you've seen it, we're just going to have a little light spoilers. I don't want to spoil the movie completely. Maybe these are people's first time seeing it, but the end, the way it's edited with the uh, with the baptism and how, you know, Michael's making his move finally. Like that is one of the best scenes in cinema history ever. They try and recreate it a little bit in 3, but it's not done as well. I just love how The Godfather 1 is structured. I think best of the entire trilogy. I just love the, you know, the, the rise of Michael in this movie. I think that's what the first one is about. You know, this is his rise to power, you know, taking over for his father and, you know, because it was supposed to be Sonny. Played great by James Caan here. He's such a hothead. I love it. And, you know, if you know what scene I'm talking about with all the squibs, it is so cool that scene at the Jersey Turnpike there, and it, it is just so well done. I love it. I love this movie to pieces. It is definitely my favorite Godfather movie. Then we shift into The Godfather Part 2, which is also another really great movie. And for me, the reason why I give this a notch down, and I know some people are going to disagree completely, and I completely understand, I... You know, I just gotta be honest. I am not a huge fan of when they cut back to a young Vito Corleone, uh, played by Robert De Niro in this, amazingly, by the way. You know, this is one of early Robert De Niro movies, and even though him and Al Pacino were in the same movie, it was made a big deal in 95 when they were finally on camera together in Heat, even though they're both in The Godfather 2, but different timelines. And it just, it always would take me out when they would cut back to Vito Corleone's storyline. And I perfect, and, and I understand why they do it. They want to show the rise of Vito Corleone while the fall of Michael Corleone happening. And I totally get that, because you have to see well, how Vito came up and how his character was compared to how Michael Corleone's character is. 
You know, they're two very different Dons doing things very differently. Mike is cold-blooded as can be. He does not have emotion. You know, he's and he just wasn't like that. And that's what makes this story, it's a tragedy, really. And it's Michael's tragedy, the entire trilogy. You know, he was truly in love with Apollonia. That's who he loved. And when she passes in the first movie in Italy, that's really where I believe Michael finally loses his emotional core. I think that's what it, when Apollonia died. Not when he kills the two people in the restaurant in the first one. I, people will say that that's probably where he really made the turn, but I think it's when Apollonia died and he had, he was forced, I think, to go back with Diane Keaton's character. Again, Diane Keaton in all three movies, amazing, which shouldn't be a surprise. Diane Keaton is one of our best actresses ever, so to see her pop up and just do great work is not a surprise. And as we're talking about The Godfather 1 and 2, it should be brought up that John Cazale is in both of these and not in 3 because he tragically passed away, I believe, in 1979 from cancer. And every movie that John Cazale ever appeared in was a Best Picture nominee. That should tell you something about his acting abilities. Obviously, he gets a way bigger role in The Godfather Part 2. Um, it's one of the most iconic roles and some of the most iconic scenes happening in The Godfather 2 in Cuba. You know, I know it was you. You broke my heart. And he gives him that kiss. I love that because I saw that in Billy Madison first when uh, Billy kisses Eric. I saw that before I saw The Godfather 2, so I went back to The Godfather 2, and I, you know, when I got older, and I saw that, I was like, holy shit, Billy Madison. So, I mean, you know, it's just my age. But I love that. I thought John Cazale did an incredible job. A uh, lot of great actors popping up. Uh, the actor who plays Johnny Ola in this is the same actor who plays Uncle June in Soprano, so that's always cool. Godfather 2, other than that little step back, you know, for me, just the, the two story structures, it's still an incredible movie with an incredible ending, and it really, I think, should have completed the Michael Corleone storyline, but then we get into The Godfather Part 3. Just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Now, the new cut, the Coda, uh, the Coda edition, The Death of Michael Corleone, is much better than the original cut that we get. Um, I enjoy this edition. It's the first time I ever watched it. I enjoy this much more. They did cut a lot of Sofia Coppola's lines, which I believe is one of the worst parts, unfortunately. And I love Sofia Coppola. Lost in Translation is one of my favorite movies. And as a director, she is great. But she just, she was totally miscast. They were supposed to have Winona Ryder for that role, and she backed out, and... Francis Ford Coppola replaced her with her his daughter, and I just think that was a bad decision overall. But and the movie itself, it just doesn't have that feel that the first two have. They tried, they got like the lighting kind of right, but there is just totally, it's just not the same. You know, I don't know if this is just me or me thing. I don't know if anyone else has this kind of feeling, but this movie came out in 1990, and I don't know what it is, but I could always see a movie and know what year it came out depending on like what kind of. Uh, shortcuts they take like like I could tell that this movie came out the same exact year as Ghost or Jacob's Ladder from 1990 it's obvious to me just because of how it's shot I don't know if anyone else has that kind of ability it's just weird how my mind works but I can look at this movie and go 1990 but it, I don't look at The Godfather 1 and 2 and go 1972 and 1974 I just don't do that. For this movie, it's very obvious that it's a 1990 movie. I just don't think there was as much care. And that's because Francis Ford Coppola didn't want to do this movie. And, you know, it, but it's still a good movie. If if The Godfather 1 and 2 are 10s out of 10s, this is a 7 out of 10. It's not a bad movie. You know, another knock against it is it came out the same year as Goodfellas, which I think personally is the greatest gangster movie ever made. And, you know, better than The Godfather movies. But it's not a bad movie, it's just not done as well as The Godfather 1 and 2. And it's just, you, even when you re-edit it like he did, it, it's not going to fix every problem. You know, Al Pacino, I really, you know what, for what Al Pacino was doing in the 90s, it's a very pulled back role, he definitely got back into the Michael Corleone character, and I do love that they address, like, storylines from the first two movies, you know, and they do bring up his love for Apollonia, and I, I really think that that was very important and I don't think it's a bad movie at all but again like even though it's a total step back it is still not a bad movie so still check it out especially if you're gonna be picking up this new 4k set so let's dive right into that so this 4k set just came out and it is beautiful 
if you see that you got the whole box and everything, and then each bo uh, each movie is individually packaged in their own packaging. I will actually show some pictures, but like here's the Godfather one, for example, and. They all have 4K transfers, brand new 4K transfers. They all have uh, Dolby 5.1, they have HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Um, one and two of the original mono track, which is pretty cool for uh, people who are into classic audio. That's in there, definitely a big deal. But as far as visuals, this is where this movie, these movies finally got this huge upgrade that I, I was worried, but I was excited. And they definitely nailed it. These are some of the best looking 4Ks you're gonna see visually they are amazing because these movies are very light and dark you know they have the warm yellows and oranges but then they have the deep blacks and the 4k format with hdr really makes those you know that contrast pop amazingly and i love it like they really got those blacks really dark and you know it's such a warmly lit film so like you know they use a lot of lamps like you'll see it like uh in the first one in uh vito corleone's office the lamp is really like what's you know, putting out that soft orange or yellow, and that's really what's lighting down. They do that in a lot of scenes and everything, and this is the way it's structured, and the 4K format really rises what this movie, what these movies could be, even for 3. And um, speaking of which, both versions of 3 are in this uh, package, but uh, the, the theatrical version that came out originally is actually in the bonus discs box, not with the, uh, not with part 3 in its own package. Which is weird, they have the Coda Edition in there, but Part 3's other disc is with the bonuses. So if you're a fan of that edition, I personally think it's a worse edition, but it is in here for you. Have no problem if you enjoy it, it's right there for you, right next to the bonus disc, which there's plenty of new extras in here. Plus everything that's been released previously is on that disc, so they really went all out. Right now this is running at, I believe, 90 bucks, and it's definitely worth it. There is a $130, $140 edition out, so if you're a huge Godfather fan, I would definitely probably run out and grab that. I don't have that to review. I only have this edition to review. So definitely, if you're a fan, get that because the visual upgrades alone are definitely worth the price. So any negatives I have, the visuals definitely blow that out of the water. I was worried that this was gonna, they were gonna lose that warm feeling and try and make it look too realistic, but they didn't. They definitely kept the original cinematography. Everything looks great. Um, you really could just see the detail. The skin tones don't look bad. They look real. Like, it literally looks like a movie that was shot recently, but that, you know, was made to look like the 40s. Actually, when this movie first came, well, no, not when it first came out, when I first saw it, I would have swore this was in the 40s and not made in the 70s. That's how good of a job they did, and that's why I have another knock against three. But it is just so beautiful what they did with these 4Ks. It's just worth the price just on that alone. Just on the fact that they are so good looking. And they, it really is amazing. And it's just, it, I can't watch my Blu-rays that I have. of them Again, I'm only going to watch these 4Ks. There are no Blu-rays in this package. Also, they're only 4Ks. So just make sure you know that. Um, there is a Blu-ray set, same thing. And then there's one thing I do want to point out that is a negative. I mean, the visuals are incredible, so definitely don't do that. But the actual packaging itself, I definitely would have liked a little more. Um, it's kind of got, they, they each got their individual packaging, which I do appreciate. But one thing I do not like is the actual box that it comes in. Because it it's cheap. And I don't understand that for The Godfather. I think you could have gone with like the hard casing that you see on such things like the Donnie Darko set or, you know, uh, the Tremor set from Arrow Video. They went with like this paper, and, and when you get this paper, you get like this in the corners, like kind of like that, like already. I'm already getting that like where the paint's kind of fading because it just goes on a shelf, and like, you know, just in shipment alone, and it kind of gets that like boat out look on the back. So as far as packaging, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little disappointed, but it's not about the packaging on this, and I totally get that. It's just, for me, when I collect, I, I love beautiful boxes, and, they definitely missed the mark on that. But as far as the look of it, like if this was steel or harder plastic with the actual design, with the red and black, you know, the rose with the gold, like beautiful, perfect. They nailed it. But, you know, the material they chose to use, it just feels cheap. And for The Godfather, I don't really think it deserved that. But overall, definitely an incredible package if you, you know, if this is going to be your first time seeing The Godfather, you can't go better than this. Grab this package, grab the best 4K Blu-ray player, grab an OLED TV, throw these in, and you will be transported 
back to the Corleone family living in Long Beach, Long Island, New York, and you will be blown away. Trust me, I am not lying about that. So overall, I could definitely recommend this. I'm going to give the entire package, including my ratings with the film, the entire thing, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. The only thing I'm going to take off is that The Godfather 3 doesn't live up to The Godfather 1 and 2, but you do get both editions and the packaging. Other than that, this is an amazing, amazing package. Definitely go and grab this if you can. We're going to be giving away one of these actually when we get to 500 subscribers, the physical edition. We do have a couple digital copies for the movies. We'll probably do that this Friday. So guys, thank you so much for joining me on this. This was a really exciting uh, video for me to make because I just sat down and I watched all three of these in three days. It was so great. So thank you so much for staying to the end. And make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And tell your friends. Mm -hmm.